Good morning champions, let's get continued with full stack web application development using JSP. So far, uh, so far we have learned uh, uh, reg regular expressions, we have learned regular expression validations and what not. So let me just quickly started with the project and we saw yesterday or in the previous lecture what we saw that we can make regular expressions and we can make them in an easy way. Now they are ready. What you're going, you, what you are going to use for first name, what you are going to use for last name, and you can make them ready, right, for your entire project. Once the file is ready, you can incorporate the same file in different projects that you may make in near future, right? And it's going to be rock solid, bulletproof validation and bulletproof security, considering your uh, uh, software application that you are developing, right? Today we are going to take another critical part of the project which is going to be password encryption look we're not taking password we never take pro password as a clear text uh, if I show you uh, let me go to the database FS project I'll go to table students and now you can see right here what we are doing is taking password as clear text so it is a crime taking clear text how can you take and submit and and take uh, clear text via post or via get request it's not done right you cannot uh, you know mm, uh, compromise the security of the subscriber or the user coming to your website you need to give him full security and plus password is something very confidential right you cannot take clear text passwords and password encryption is going to be the second step towards security uh, I'll tell you because I'll have to cover GSP security as well and for that what we are going to do we are going to start with uh, let's say about uh, we started already with the uh, input validations which was a uh, validation that is complete right and validation we completed using regex which is Java regular expressions wherein we use two different things right we used right uh, we can see boundary value analysis right so in regular expressions we use boundary value analysis and we used equivalence class partition so ECP stands for equivalence class partition right okay now let me have a look at that what is equivalence class partition and what is boundary value analysis and you can clearly see uh, right uh, uh, equivalence class partition means that unless the input is equal to this right which is a range starting from the capital A to Z and small a to Z and equals class partition has some acceptance what is accepted here is right greater than minimum is accepted right right you can see this in equivalence uh, or in boundary value analysis right or we can say greater than maximum is accepted right and the second one is right what am I doing here so it is just like this greater than and greater than <coughs> uh, sorry greater than minimum is accepted greater than maximum is right greater than maximum is rejected right less than maximum is accepted and less than minimum is rejected so now this is how it happens right uh, that uh, you cannot give greater than uh, sorry greater than minimum is accepted <coughs> right and less than maximum is accepted so greater than maximum is rejected that means more than 20 we are not going to accept and less than minimum is also rejected which is less than 3 I'm not going to accept so this is what we learned so far and what we did all the hacking tricks like using quotes uh, right terminators we are not accepting that now name I know that name cannot be this name cannot be underscore name cannot be dash so we are accepting what we want to accept from user right so let me go back to register 
and this is what we had <coughs> done uh, so far right uh, we enter the first name we enter the last name and every single thing uh, that was done and verification was also done right verification is also done now what we have to learn more right generation or generating tokens is left in securities session high hijack management is uh, you know it's pending right and we have uh, uh, XSS pending which is this is come they, these things come under GSP securities right So that is cross-site scripting uh, security is pending, right? Input. So input sanitation is also uh, pending, right? Uh, so there are few things which we have been able to complete, and there are few things which are still remaining, right? Input. Input encryption is still pending, right? And <coughs> regex. validation is complete right so I'll highlight the things which we have done right uh, verification is done regex validation is done tokens and input encryption is done we'll be doing it today itself right and the remaining things we shall continue in the concurrent classes so let's get quickly started now what we are trying to do the password that we are trying to enter from here right uh, is meant to go to database and when it's meant to go to database is it meant to go to database in clear text no it is going to go to the database as an encrypted format in an encrypted format right <coughs> sorry and how do you achieve that first thing that we are going to do is open the project and go to source packages right and go to essentials and I'll make a new Java class right here and I call this as password so I'll make this class as password encryption so after making this class what I need to do is create a function right and I'll create this uh, I'll create two functions right here I'll create two uh, algorithms we have some encryption algorithms right here um, one is SHA-1, SHA-512 is there and MD5 hash is also there so I'll make two functions public right static string so because string we have to accept password right here so we'll accept string input so that is what we are going to accept and we are going to return back the input right so that's why once you pass password in clear text the function will return to you an encrypted password and the name of this function is going to be md5 here we are going to make md5 hash passwords or we can say md5 hash password encryption so here I'll write it down md5 hash right md5 hash password encryption is the first method right and second method is going to be uh, sha1 so the sha1 is also used for messaging encryption in uh, facebook or uh, login encryption of facebook is also sha1 right so we'll use the same sha1 method to encrypt our passwords today right and for that we may require few classes the number one class that we may require here is message digest and this is from the package java.security so I'll import this package message digest and I call this as MD make an instance right and get an instance I want because because if you go to message digest you can clearly see right uh, this message digest is basically uh, where it is it is basically an abstract class that you cannot create an instance 
of right so we cannot create an instance of this abstract class but we can use the class to use to ask for message digest dot get instance what do you want what instance do you want I say hey I need the instance of md5 hash key or encryption right md5 hash I need uh, uh, an instance of md5 hash and this is going to create an exception I'll keep it in try and I'll try and catch no such algorithm exception as e all right and I will throw it if it not if you don't override it so I'll throw mm, a new and uh, not override it for example uh, I'm throwing the exception if it causes any exception if you are causing or if the algorithm is not present or the library is not present so it is going to throw a new runtime exception right and that is going to be e so now it's going to throw a new runtime exception right here so that thing is done okay <laughs> All right, now let's get going with this. And because I have to take a data and convert it into one by one. For example, if if I enter p, p is going to be divided into some characters like this. So the database already says p is this, and that such is going to be uh, the table for encryption. That every single word is going to be encrypted with some random number, right? Which you do not understand, which normal human being, or it's not in a normal human readable format, right? Okay, for that I'll have to break it down to byte. So I will say hey byte and I call this as message hey message digest is equal to use the same instance that you have created right is equal to message digest dot digest right and it is going to take the bytes from input right so break it down to bytes because you are going to give it to byte message digest so i'll say input dot get bytes so you're getting bytes from input you're breaking down into <coughs> bytes whatever input you are uh, getting you're breaking down into bytes right here and that goes to the byte array message digest i repeat you have supplied input you already got an instance of md5 right now what you do you get the bytes from input right so for example if i say i'll show you this demonstration right here i'll go to register page i will say <coughs> out dot print I'll say hello right or I can say string s is equal to hello and I can print here hello right so let me see what are we getting we should get hello are we getting hello which page it is register dot gsp sorry because this page is called on AJX post so I'll go to register student and I will use it here inside script lets Chal, right now you can see you're getting hello now if I say s dot get bytes right if I say I need to print now you can see this is the byte structure of your uh, hello now you have been once you take bytes of hello and each and every byte so this is the byte uh, we can say bytes from uh, this hello right so once you're taking bytes then you can convert each and every byte into a different uh, structure right this is what happens when you take bytes so now I have done take bytes input dot get bytes so now that goes to byte message digest right okay and now what I do right here I can say because it's going to cause big integer so I will use big so I will say big integer right I'll use big integer as number right as a big integer number is equal to new big integer so that is the class used and uh, the class has a constructor that even takes a byte array and it takes two radix so now I'll supply two things number one is going to be a one right here mm, right and what I can do right here for SHA1 for, for, for MD5 hash 
I will say uh, hey I am going to supply it one which is going to be two you can see this that it takes the int number of bits how many bits you want to take together right for example I want to go bit by bit for example I want to take first bit for example if I go back to register student uh, dot GSP and I type only H which is H only so now the what is the byte structure you can see it changes every time it changes from the memory you can see but BA remains consistent right so I say I want you to do one bit right at a time so I repeat one bit at a time and where is your bit it is in message digest so now it is going to give you a number generated out of one bit at a time from this message digest right so now I will say string what is the hash text then I will say hash text uh, I will say string hash text is equal to because the return type of the function is string so I'll say number has to be converted back to string so now you are converting this number back to string right and you are returning this hash text so I will say return hash h a s h hash text so r e t u r and you're returning this hash text back to the function right here right so this is your md5 hash function being defined mm, all right and you're returning hash text all right and here you're throwing a new runtime exception so that this thing is done mm, and let me go to sha1 now i'll use the same it is it's going to be a revise for you is equal to message digest dot get instance of now this time I will get instance of SHA-1 algorithm right and it is going to create an exception or throw an exception I'll say try and catch no such algorithm exception and what you got to do is throw new right so you are going to throw uh, a new runtime exception which is this e right so this part is done right so try catch block is done now uh, now for sha1 i'll use the same byte array and i call this as result is equal to now we know that message digest md which is the message digest dot digest right and input dot get bytes so now you're getting bytes from input converting input whatever you supply here converting it to bytes array all right but yeah the digest is basically going to be the algorithm of conversion is coming from sha1 how that is going to get converted right once you encrypt cannot be decrypted there's no such algorithm of decryption right mm, all right and now i can use another thing right here so i'll say string buffer all right so i'll use string buffer this time sb is equal to new I'll say string buffer as b is equal to new string buffer right and I create an instance of string buffer right and what I do right here uh, inside this string buffer or what I do here so let me try the same here can I use the same so let me use the same here okay uh, so I'll use sha1 right here get the instance of sha1 let's see the difference right here password encryption and let me go and check this out register okay uh, here so I'll say string password is equal to passwrd password so I'll open notepad and see the result okay now I will say print out my password so this is going to be my clear text password that I'm taking right now this is what we are doing right we're taking clear text password now you're getting password right now I will say hey wait a second I call the class which is P A S S W O R D encryption so you're calling the class password encryption dot md5 so now you send this password to this md5 hash and let us see what are we getting now you can see this is the integer 
that we are getting now you can see it is not going to change now all right if you want to convert this integer back to the complete sha1 or or that algorithm right uh, or to the hash text right if you want to convert it to hash text i'll tell you how to convert it to hash text but yeah if i google it right so you're not able to find any different thing right here but yeah, i'll have to do this right here just to convert it properly before returning the hash text all right uh, so i'll say that i want to loop through all the bytes right i'll say if hash text dot length um, i'll say while hash text i want to shorten it dot length all right is let's say about i want to use 32 bit so i'll say is less than 32 if every bit is one bit every character will be one bit so i want it to be 32 bit long right so unless it is less than 32 the length of hash text now it's not 32 here you can see clearly it is it's it's not at least 32 it's almost 100 all right uh, what you got to do is you say hash text right is equal to so i'll add a zero right and i'll add a hash text i'm just adding zero uh, i'm just uh, you know adding one more zero to the hash text and then let us see what is going to happen here now and what number are we going to are we calling md5 hash yeah we're calling md5 all right so but it should not give me this big password uh, so string hash text is called to number dot to string while hash text dot length is less than 32 so i say hash text is equal to a zero plus hash text right so you're adding zero string mm, to the hash text but yeah now I'll convert it to dot to string 16. So I'm converting it to 16 bit string right here. And let's see. Yeah, now you are getting the actual number, right? All right, so what is it? This 16 bit, right? Convert dot to string to 16 bit. So now if I copy this and Google this, now they have been able to decrypt in some cases, right? So you can still see that it's assuming that it's an MD5 password and the encrypted password is password. I'll tell you how to cope up with this but yeah this is now pure md5 hash conversion so let me take a look at sha1 i'll just define it again i'll explain it again for you don't worry so now if i use sha1 and let me see what i get now now you're still getting a number you're not doing conversion as i said we need to do conversions for this as well i'll go to sha1 and i say that hey i am using uh, this uh, you mind if I do the same like I did in okay like I did in md5 hash so I'll be doing the same in I'm adding just zero and I'm converting it to 16 bit string now we are getting this as sha1 so let me google this as well and see what are we getting yeah decoded so now it's a decoded sha1 from 1234 from hash cloud so they're decoding it so let me see what is the decoded number here right so this is sha1 and this is md5 hash both are with u all right and yeah it is able they can decode it so there's no not a problem all right but yeah i'll tell you how to handle this so that it's not uh, decodable right so now create an instance of sha1 or md5 hash right convert your input to byte array right and then uh, convert that byte array to a big number right by one bit at a time and then what you got to do convert it to 16 bit string right you're passing 16 here and then what you do unless it's less than 32 you just go on adding zero zero after every single digit you will be having a zero right here then you can see that you're converting it right and then you are returning the hash text right so now you're not going to get that hashtag hashtag is equal to zero plus hashtags so you're going to get a complete 32 bit text and then zero then complete 32 bit hashtags right uh, so zero is not going to be 
uh, visible in our case. Now, if I say here, system.out.println, if I print hash text, so let me try and print hash text right here. I go to glass fish and say clear. So let me see the hash text right here. So now this is the hash text that you are getting, right? Now you can see. Now I'll just compare them. So this is the hash text you are getting using SHA-1. And if I now don't do this, so let's not do this. Still, we are not. Now you can see. So there's no difference. So it's not doing it, I suppose. Mm, let it be like it is. So let me not add zero. So let, let, let's delete the zero. Right? Uh, because you're taking 16 bits, so it's not going to go to 32, right? By no means. Right? So let me have both of them. So one is this is SHA1. And let me go and call uh, md5 hash. Now this is md5 hash. Okay. Fine, then we are done. All right. So I'll just delete it. Okay. Uh, now we are done with this. Okay. So now this is md5 hash encryption. Convert it to big integer. Convert it back to 16 bit string and return it back to md5. And they have changed the instance from MD5 to SHA1 and here you go, right? And everything else is fine. I'll just delete system.out.print. So now MD5 hash and my SHA1 methods are ready. Both MD5.1, you can say this is SHA1, absolutely ready. And we have MD5, absolutely ready. Now what you've got to do is, I'll go to my accounts controller back, all right? Because I'm already mapping my password, right? So because I'm already doing it, right? Uh, so I'll go back and do this, right? Save user is right here. So what I do, I am taking password to my database. You'll say user dot get password. Now let me show you how not to crack, right? Because we saw that how to crack. Now this is if I say p a s s w o r d. And then if I open and I Google this, right, so you can see MD5 hash. Now you can clearly see, right, that there are some, you know, list of decoded hashes. So they decoded some hashes. So let me just check it out. Yeah, many, many decoded hashes. Now you can see, right, it's an MD5 hash and was successfully reversed into string we reverse into string absolutely and the reverse character is password you can see here but what i do here i will say wait a second do md5 hash of this password right and but please also do password dot sh i'll say password encryption dot sha1 also First, I convert my password to SHA-1 and then I convert my password to MD5 hash. I'm doing it twice now, All right? So this is what I get back as a result. So now if I Google this, will it be decoded? Still SHA-1 reversed, right? It's still getting reversed by SHA-1. I'll say, okay, wait a second. I will do something like this. I'll say ENC password is equal to let me change it's a big file name password encryption so I will rename it All right so I'll say P E N C or we can say hash the class name is hash now so I refactored right so what I do I will say hey wait a second my encrypted password is now my encrypted password is going to be uh, hash so I want to get H A S H hash essentials dot hash so it's capital so I'll say hash dot md5 of password right 
which is this string password and then I want hash dot sha1 of this password and I want back right uh, we can say hash dot md5 of this password so we're using triple encryption now first md5 your password will be converted to md5 and that md5 converted will be converted to sha1 and that entire thing will be converted to md5 so now what i can do here i can say out dot print right so i can use enc password now see what i get all right we're getting an error okay out dot print is giving an error why why would you yeah because there is no scriptlet fine so there's no error now this is your final password so now uh, let me go and google this password once again right now you can see it's still showing me password right here right md5 sha1 md5 md5 so i'll say hey wait a second i will do a final try of i will say hash right i'll hash it to sha1 once again all right so now let me see what do we get now this is the final sha1 we are getting right and now if i google it so you can see it's still getting password from somewhere all right and what i do i'll do it again i will say hey and now i will convert the sha1 to sha1 back all right i will say hash right and i will say hash dot sha1 all right so this is the final thing i have to do now now see this is my encryption of password all right so i will write this or we can say my password right whatever you can write password or my password whatever you want so now i'll take this password and google it again so this is my final try nothing found now you can see it did not match now even if you go to the maximum i mean how many encryptions is possible right so that is not possible right here so this is how we are going to encrypt right so now i'll keep my function ready for this kind of encryption all right mm, i'll go to my hash again which was earlier password encryption i change the name to hash and i will say i'll make them private i'll make this as private and i will say hash dot public right i'll say public static e n c r y p t the function name is encrypt so here what we are going to take we are going to take string right input right so this is going to take string input right and it's going to be public static string encrypt right so i'm going to call now i'll say now this right can see i will say hey you mind if you return right this class that is hash dot sha1 of input same i have made right first converted to md5 then sha1 then md5 then sha1 back to sha1 so this is how it goes so now this is my function that is going to return me the same encryption algorithm right so now my encryption is complete i'll go to my register student and instead of this i will call and password is equal to hash dot so there's only one public function which is this so now let me echo this all right now let me print it out now this is my final string google it and you'll be surprised it's not found now what i need to do is just delete this now i need to send encrypted uh, you know encrypted password to the database right that's why i keep that you know if you go back and check your structure of the database table you will see that password is 250 
why would you take password to 250 and that that's because of the reason the reason was encryption i knew i had to teach you encryption that's why i did it at the first go right now wherever i'm taking this password now you can see i'm taking this password right here i'll say hey wait a second what i need to do is take encrypted password so i'll say hash i'll say hash dot encrypt i'll use the function hash dot encrypt here now that's it my password is going to be completely encrypted and it's going to be sent the database or what we can do right here uh, you know once you're sending it because you're matching it right <clears throat> or we can do it here also so I don't recommend it doing here let us try doing it somewhere else in register.jsp <clears throat> So what we are doing in register.jsp is we are mapping automatically with u details, right? We are mapping it automatically, user.class, and then we are calling the save function. Before you call the save function, you might if you do user dot write set password is going to be user dot get password, the same password, but yeah, what you are doing here, you will say hash dot encrypt because you have to do validation and verifications as well now you can see this thing is done you can do it to another thing set c password which is confirm password right at the time of request is send you are again doing user.get c password now you're getting the password that has been mapped using json you're taking it out encrypting it and get, giving it back to it. You are taking the confirm password out, encrypting it and giving it back to it, then calling the save user function. So let me see the timings and then tell you if we have good amount of time remaining. <coughs> let me give it a final try. I have deleted everything in the database, so truncated a database and let me give password. Password and confirm password do not match. Okay, please enter valid mode. Okay, now we're having zero here. Two four seven nine eight zero two. Fahim Khan was registered successfully. And now if I go and check my database, now you can see the password. I have taken encrypted password in the database. And this is going to be rock solid, unbreakable. Now I'll tell you how to use the same password while logging in. Because we still believe we have to log in uh, right we are not going to use only registration at that time we still have to use encryption for this kind of a password right so now we have been achieved we have been able to achieve two things uh, rock solid validation and verification and we have been able to encrypt and now we are having rock solid registrations right and now I did not validate everything here right so now we yeah we still have to deal with this dob uh, right we can deal with this dob again because this dob is causing exception but yeah you got you guys got to complete this uh, right and complete encryption as well and complete the registration now it's a rock solid registration screen completely secure and complete uh, it and be in sync with me as well and then what we are going to do right i am going to go back to register student and now what we are going to do here is change the type of you can see text to date this date dob is going to be changed to uh, date now you can see that you have choose your dob the moment i choose this now this is going to generate some sort of exception right here all right <clears throat> It's not available, so I'll say at niit.com is available. No problem. All right. Uh, mm, I don't want to give this, so let me select the gender male and I'll say register. Duplicate key 9419 is already there, so I'll say 9086 44124. And now let me see uh, date of birth 4 28 2020 frame can was registered 
64, 28, 20, 20 is chosen. Yeah, now we are getting 4, 28, 20, 20. So date of birth is also selected. Now without any exception, we are not getting any exception for date of birth as well. It has been changed to input type. Date and now we are getting everything fine. Gender chosen for myself, 0. I don't know why. Alright, and yeah, it's absolutely fine. So we don't have any problems. Why are we getting 0? Did I choose male or female? It's still there. I chose male. Is male 0? I don't know. Male is 1. Why are we getting 0? Alright. Maybe I have changed the type here as well. Who knows? Uh, let me go back to users. And see whether I have changed the type. Yeah, gender has been... No, gender is still int. Yeah, it is integer. But why aren't we getting it, right? So let me go to the output and see the query. So, yeah, we're getting zero. And yeah, we'll rectify it. We still have to rectify it, right? Why are we getting zero for male? You do it. Uh, it was working. Mine is broken. You correct yours and let me know if I can help you down in the comment section. And also complete encryption and then we'll get started with session management, anti-session hijacking and different different security. Security is going to be a fun. Security is, security is always a fun, right? Uh, expecting what the hacker can do and just blocking each and every access of hacker, right? As I promised, the full stack development is not about only developing. It's about developing full, secure, valid, and, and, and distributed application. I wish you all the best. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Take care.